I know. I just don't think they're going to trust like me and Bubby to walk around and be like, ah, it's fucking Butler's yeah. Cabin. Look at that. I'm going to go inside. Four players in my Barstool Sports. We are back. We got the entire squadron. We're doing a little players championship recap. Frankie and Trainer in the office. Dan's in California. I'm back in Arizona. Uh, we got now three weeks until the Masters tournament. All night last night, it was just I was watching the live from coverage. I was watching the pressers. Uh, it's just the Scotty Shuffler show. He's won back to back weeks. Won eight and a half million dollars in the last two weeks. People said for the last year and a half that if this guy can figure out how to putt, he's going to be the biggest problem uh, in history. And he pretty much is. He figured out how to putt. He's got a messed up neck. He's got the tape thing going on like Michelle Wee and Tiger Woods had for a while. It didn't matter. He still wins at the Players' Championship. He had his cool green pants on, sitting on set up there laughing. He's got his wife, Meredith, who's an angel. She's pregnant. They're going to have a family, his grandma, the whole thing. He's just, like, perfect, and it's the Scotty show right now is pretty much what we're sitting at. On the last show, when we were making picks, um, I had said, if you put yourself in the future – what are we going to be talking about on Tuesday's show? Is it going to be the field or are we going to be saying it was always Scotty? He's going to win this thing. He's the best player on planet Earth. He's playing as good as he can. And are we just going to be like, of course it's Scotty. Did I take my own advice? Hashtag DK partner. No, I did not. I did not bet on Scotty Scheffler. And that's a mistake. Guy shot a 64 on Sunday, came all the way back. It didn't always look like he was going to win it. Xander and Wyndham, they were all up there playing great. But then Scotty, man, he's inevitable, like Thanos. He's just going to win golf tournaments when he's playing this well and putting halfway decent, and that's exactly what he did. First back-to-back -back players champion in history. We Incredible. Said, we said this last week, and it's like it's crazy that um, we don't bet this guy, hashtag DK partner, because it's just inevitable, like you're saying. I'm sitting there sweating a Sepp Straka top 10, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror being like, how is Scotty Scheffler not the guy on your ticket? How? What are you doing that you're not putting Scotty Scheffler on there? Every single week, this guy has a chance to win. And now every single week, he is winning. Just like I've said for the last couple of years, I'm so proud of you, Scotty. I wish that you didn't, you know, I'm not going to say that you've changed, but I wish that we just had that relationship that we used to have. I really do. I mean, the guy's winning every single golf tournament he plays in. He's hitting every single fairway, every single green, and now he's rolling in putts like a maniac. I wish I could talk to him. I wish I could say, great job, atta boy, Scotty. He says that um he says trophies don't don't win him any brownie points at home with Meredith. Well, you know, trophies are changing this. I think if I were Scotty Scheffler, I wouldn't talk to a bunch of podcasters either. We were his friends. He didn't, we he didn't have he a said, win. He said yesterday that he like tries to he's very, very careful with what he says in the media because he doesn't want anything to be taken, you know out of context or whatever it is. So I don't think it's personal. No, he went out of his way in the presser to be like, yeah, I, I truly don't have social media. And he was like, I go through on the Apple news thing and any golf story that pops up, I said, N I select not for me. And he's like, I legitimately don't get positive news stories in golf. I don't get negative news stories in golf. I don't see any of it. So I do think there was a little hot stretch where he was kind of interacting and mingling with us quite a bit i i honestly think he in his own mind might have felt like he was flying too close to the sun and he's like maybe i like those guys but i don't want to do literally any of it and he just lives in his little circle that episode from full swing last year where he's just walking down his cute little street in texas with his wife and they're drinking their iced coffee and giggling with each other that's just all he cares about i think guy made eight and a half million dollars in a week whatever he's doing is working yeah a few stats that just kind of illustrate his greatness right now. He's He's got 27 straight rounds under par, which if you think about the courses that they've played recently, Riviera, Bay Hill, TPC Sawgrass, those are not easy golf courses. He's got 27 rounds under par. His last two final rounds, bogey-free 66 at Bay Hill, bogey-free 64 at TPC Sawgrass. What was so crazy about yesterday was the 64 felt so fucking ordinary. Like, I yeah. remember when Cameron Smith shot 64 in the players a couple years ago. It was like, holy shit. Cameron Smith is on fire. He's making everything. He shot 64 at the players. With Scotty yesterday, it was like, yeah, he played really solid. And shot 64. Like, it just, it didn't feel, it didn't feel fluky. It didn't feel like he had to make a, I mean, obviously he hold out on four. But he just hit so many perfect shots in a row that it's, my friend Shane Ryan at Golf I just wrote this. Shut up. Uh, the banality of... The banality of perfect golf. It was like, it was almost boring because it was so freaking perfect.
Did you know that you can get tickets to all kinds of different stuff? I'm looking at the Phoenix Suns game. I'm back in Phoenix for the entire week. Phoenix Suns game, Wednesday night, March 20th, 37 bucks. Bang. Wow. Zach Bryan in New York at UBS Arena this Saturday coming up on game time as well. You can go there. It's uh it's an amazing it's an amazing application where you just know that you're going to get last minute tickets and you know you're going to get the best price available. Why not just pick the one that has all the best prices, you know? I think that's right. And um yeah, I mean, I was expecting that to be significantly higher. It's clearly not. Um Zach Bryan, I'm looking at tickets right here. You can just get and pick all kinds of different venues. He's unbelievably phenomenal right now. I'm looking uh even like you can just gear up June, you can go to a Zach Bryan show in LA for under a hundred bucks on game time. So this Jeez. app is phenomenal. The official ticketing partner of Barcelona Sports, if you were not aware, is Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. It's very easy. They got this nice tab on here. You hit shows, you hit music, you hit sports. You can kind of select your favorite. They got flash deals for sudden discounts, zone deals for when you're uh, feeling flexible and their lowest price guarantee means that if you could find the same seats for less anywhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game Time is the best place for last minute seats with up to 60% off of your favorite events. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code 4 F O R E for $20 off your first purchase. All you got to do is use the code 4 $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Well, this is going to be a good segue into a couple takes that I have, which I just was not drinking as much of the Kool Aid about the leaderboard as everybody else was. And I, the tournament as a whole, is nearly flawless. We talked about that all week last week. We were gassing it up. The golf course the fans that are there and even like the type of fan that is there is like almost an Augusta like fan patron, whatever they're respectful. It doesn't feel like they let too many people in there. So it's like the right amount. The actual golf course and the history of it is perfect. It's got the right amount of difficulty. There's some certain uh, shots on that course, like that tee shot on 14. Remember tiger hooked that one. It took the drop that people were going to be like, when they get to those holes, you know, these are the tough holes when they get to 16, you know, you remember JT ripping that sick low draw and that these guys could birdie this hole and the no 17 and 18. All that stuff just delivers. The clubhouse is magical and they don't put grandstands up in certain spots so that they have corridors where you can see it all the time. It's absolutely awesome. But I was trying to think about this leaderboard yesterday and the way that things truly did unfold. And to your point, Dan, Scotty Scheffler never did anything that really was like an iconic moment. He just hit the shots that he was supposed to hit. He grabbed the lead by not making any bogeys. He only made four bogeys in the entire tournament. Randall was going on and on last night about how it's not whoever makes the most birdies. He said Rory McIlroy makes a trillion birdies, but he makes too many bogeys. He said last year, Scotty Scheffler, which was the second best ball striking round in the strokes gained era in history, second only to Tiger Woods in 2006. So even those other years where Tiger was amazing, Scotty is better with ball striking, and he just makes the least amount of bogeys. And you watched it on the back nine yesterday. You did have Xander and Harmon and Wyndham and Fitz that they were right there. And Scotty just didn't make the bogeys when they made a couple bogeys. He hit one up on 16 in that bunker, made an easy little up and down, and then he just won without doing anything spectacular. And it got me thinking of what is it about this leaderboard that I'm missing? And it's not that it wasn't incredibly exciting. You were hanging on nearly every shot, but it never really got the juices going to the, to the millionth degree. It never really transcended until the putt at the end that lipped out. I think that clip transcended. But outside of that, it didn't really transcend. And I went back and looked. And of all those guys that are all, I, I looked up their world ranking. Scotty's obviously number one. Wyndham's number four. Xander's number five. Harmon's number eight. Fitz is number 11. Like, you've got this stacked leaderboard from a world ranking standpoint. But in 2021, the last time that everyone was eligible, because the Live Golf didn't exist yet, that everybody was eligible by the tour's own system to determine who the biggest stars in the game were, which is the PIP. It was the first year of the PIP. Not one of those guys was in the top 10, and all they did was the top 10 that year. 
It's Tiger. It was Phil. It was DJ. It was Rom. Half of those guys are gone, and the other half still win the pip every single year. It's the Speeds. It's Ricky Fowler. Those guys were in there. The only time I could find that any of those players were even in the top five in the PIP was, I believe, Scotty, like last year and maybe the year before. Xander is an incredible golfer. He's a nice guy. I've had him on the show. He doesn't move really the needle. He's kind of a boring golfer, just like Scotty is. Wyndham's definitely a little bit more exciting with ripping the ball. He hits it a million miles. But for whatever reason, he is a handsome cat. He's got the great story, uh, inspirational story with his mom. Wins the U.S. Open. He just doesn't seem to put asses in the seats. Brian Harmon, we talked about in this show, he's a bulldog. Kids is guy. He doesn't really move the needle. And so, you know, I went back and looked at, like, the 2001 Masters leaderboard. It was Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, David Duvall, VJ Singh. And when you, when you look at people who are kind of saying, this is maybe the best player's finish ever, it was awesome. It was incredibly fun to watch if you're a golf nut a little bit. But I just, it, it lacks, you needed a Spieth in there. You needed somebody, because Spieth plays fucking crazy golf, man. Like Phil Mickelson played crazy golf. And all of those guys that are up there, they kind of just play solid golf. And really good golf is boring golf. I think one guy posting a number and having three guys have to chase it down. I don't, the names aren't as important to me. And these are, I think they're big enough names to make it matter. Like Xander's a huge name. Wyndham, he had a full episode on Full Swing, is now a huge name. Uh, I And Harmon, is a, is a, he holds a special place in our hearts, I guess. I, I'm less concerned about all those names and all those things that you listed. I just need to see a good finish. And having the number one player in the world have to shoot a 64, post a 20 under, and then have the three holes at TPC Sawgrass matter and have Wyndham throw a dart, have Xander throw a dart, and have Wyndham make a birdie on 16, and then he's all three guys had to make birdie on 18 to send it to a playoff. I think the names are less important. Those things you're listening, I don't think they matter. I think it's it's what's actually happening, and people were into it. Like, social media was going crazy for this tournament. I, I don't like you're ranking it up against, like, these different tournaments. I think in the moment when you're watching it, and then um, Wyndham lips out, like, I thought it pretty much had – everything but what you're speaking to is sort of the difference between the appeal of the pga tour and the appeal of live golf right the appeal of live golf is that they have all these personalities and there's an edge to it like that's we're you know we're golf but louder like we're we're, we're golf but we're doing it a different way whereas the pga tour what they lean on is that pure competition right 72 holes not a shotgun start like trent talked about that dynamic of one guy shooting low but playing earlier and also everyone playing the same golf course in the same order. So, you know, okay, like you said, you get to 16, 17, 18, you know, everyone's going to be playing those last. That is what the tour is leaning on. It's like, we are the meritocracy. This is the ultimate test of golf. And I keep thinking about what Xander said on this podcast, which was my entertainment value is my golf. I'm never going to be yeah. that guy who is Bryson or is, you know, even Bubba Watson. My entertainment is playing really, really good golf. And hopefully that's enough. And that's what the tour has been banking on. And maybe maybe they're wrong in that. But I kind of I'm kind of with Trent. I feel like it matters how the tournament finishes. It ma it matters what it all looked like. And it just felt big. And it felt very very like authentic golf yesterday. The tour should feel energized that this can still get people excited. That that a finish like this can still galvanize social media and be like that was a great golf tournament. It actually is. It goes against the point that you're making, Riggs, where it's like I don't need the speeds and the tigers and the fills it's like if you can just have a great golf tournament that is enough to have people say that was fucking awesome yeah i mean it, it, there was a lot going on yesterday obviously it's just a big it's saint patrick's day everyone's just kind of hanging out there's family there's all this stuff on tv i'm assuming this is all stemming from your tweet rigs which you got you kind of got hate for in the from the golf community i'm assuming right saying that this was like a, like a big miss for the tour or whatever that it didn't go to a playoff i wanted to go to a playoff I definitely agree with that, but it was the first time in a long time it got me off my couch and got the group chat going of being like, holy fuck, this is some of the best golf we've seen in a long time. It was like, it wasn't birdies and there weren't hole outs. Obviously, uh, Scotty hooped that one on, on four, which was awesome. He, he got that eagle, which really set him off for the whole entire day. And you're like, holy shit, Scotty Scheffler's going to climb this leaderboard. He's just going to win this thing. It was just cool to watch him all day, but that ending was like, we've got three holes left, getting up to the 17th T box you got Brian Harmon on the green and at that moment you're thinking there's four guys that are going to be tied to go to a playoff at this moment yeah. and you're at the 17th at TPC Sargas you're like holy shit text messages are going crazy is he going to make this those two shots back to back Wyndham answers like Xander's on the green they both got looks you're like holy shit 
Then those tee shots, you got to go over the water. My heart was in my throat thinking about standing on that tee, having to go make a birdie on 18. Now they don't do it, but Wyndham has, you know, 80% of that ball in the hole at the end. I, I really thought it was phenomenal. And I've been like the biggest critic of this shit. I need storylines. I need a lot of like pizzazz and a lot of entertainment. I, I, I was eaten out of the fucking PGA Tour's palm yesterday. And I think that yesterday was unbelievably awesome. And I, what I was trying to kind of dissect in my own brain is how come it feels like we never get this? Why do we not get this more? And I think that a lot of the other sports that are much bigger and are consistent and are growing and people look at them like they're healthy and that their, their curve is going in the right direction made me think about like, what is it that is potentially missing? Because I think throughout this entire season, we have not really gotten anything close to this, like at all, really. And the PGA tour and professional golf. And you've had a lot of bad, like we do a lot on the show of talking about bad stuff that's going on. It's been a million long shot winners. The pebble final round was canceled. The Phoenix open, all of the clips that came out were that this tournament is too much of a shit show. Tiger Woods has only played one round. Roy McIlroy is not really competing at all. You had Rahm and Hatton like left at the end of last year. Everybody kind of shits on Jay Monahan every week. So in my mind, I was sort of like, yes, this is, this is absolutely amazing. It was almost perfect. The theater down the stretch is off the charts. Got everybody on the end of their seat. My group texts are going crazy as well. It was more like, can the tour... Does the tour have a recipe or a future or what it needs to deliver something on this level, close to this level, on a more consistent basis? Because it feels like we never get this. And yesterday was awesome. And I'm trying to kind of figure out my brain, how can they work smartly, creatively to try to curate a tour that delivers something close to this even on a more consistent basis but, but like comparing it to other sports like uh, baseball has 162 games how often is there like a walk-off in like in the bottom of the 11th that's like transcending the entire sport where everyone's talking about like this is their big event and it and it and it completely cashed in people were going crazy for it i understand that the other ones aren't as like amazing finishes and they really didn't like get people going but this is so early in the year still too. I mean, I just feel like this was a huge event. This was their big event and it worked. I don't it's it's like it's like watching a football game and it being like like the other events, the Pebble event was like a 41 to 15 win. It's like, "All right, that's just the NFL. Like sometimes it's not always coming down to the wire. This one happened to come down the wire. It's the biggest event. This is their Super Bowl and it fucking worked." Yeah, and I think it, you know, part of the reason is because they invest a lot in this tournament. And I was talking about this in my writing and the videos that I've made this week is like you can't just throw money at the players, more money at the players and chop the field sizes in half and expect the fan to be won over, right? Like that, that makes the product better for the players. Doesn't necessarily make the product better for the fans. Right. This week, the tour goes all out in building up this tournament with like their advertising campaigns, their social media campaigns. They invest in the actual broadcast. There's more cameras around. There's, you know, all these different streams on ESPN Plus, which allow guys to watch people to watch who they're betting on watch their favorite players. There were way fewer commercials, which I think has to be part of the blueprint going forward where, you know, you sell, oh, instead of just showing a 30 second commercial from Optum Health, they say Optum Health sponsors this commercial free. There are so many different ways to advertise. I think you're onto something, Riggs, where it's almost like with events, like less is more. If we have 10 events, whatever, the signature events that are like this, and you actually build all of them up and you take the commercials away and you put more streams on and you advertise them more and you lean on the history in these incredible venues and you have these 10 tournaments that are built up like this, I think that is the way. Instead, I don't think that just throwing more money at guys to, is, is going to do it. You have to actually invest in the product and the, the broadcast, you could tell just from watching it, there was more people on it, they were faster. It was just a bigger, better deal than the average PGA Tour tournament by a long shot. You watch that broadcast, and then you watch the Riviera broadcast, or you watch the Bay Hill broadcast, and it's night and day. Sounds a little stupid, but I, it benefits from the fact, this, this tournament benefits from the fact that we just continually tell people that it's a big deal. We're constantly telling people that this is the fifth major, it's a great field, it's all these things. Now, it, it benefits from having a great ending, too, and when you have those, things, those two things put together, you get what you got yesterday. But I, I think Dan's right. I think you got to make these events feel huge. And a big part of that is telling people this is a huge deal. And I don't know if you can do that for tournaments that aren't the players and that aren't the majors, but 
I think human nature, if you just keep telling people this tournament's a big deal and the field is good enough and then you get an ending like yesterday, that's sort of the recipe. But I don't know if people are going to buy How, it every What week. are they supposed to do, though? Like, I don't the know. The waste management has a quarter of a million people walking through the gate. It's fucking huge. I don't... Like all these events, it feels like they're doing a pretty damn good job of trying to build it up. I don't know how much more. The players is the players. The players is yeah. just like how the Masters is the Masters. There's, you can't compare these. This is their premier event. I don't know that you can really take but this they, model you can and do work. things to make it feel more similar with the broadcast. I think. Yeah. Can you though? Like, are you like? Yes. Riv- really? You you can yeah, sell you can, people you can, on you like the finish of Riviera being have more cameras, like the finish have more at Sawgrass. Screens. I guess so. I, I don't know. I just think sawgrass is sawgrass. It's just it works. It's a recipe for success, just like how every other sport has their things that work. Um, I don't but know. I guess this sport is in a position where you need to figure out a way where the the events feel like more of a premium. And I we've talked about on this show a lot. Like, do you have ten premium events and then a bunch of team events throughout the year? Like, how do you make each event? You can't make it as big as the players because it is the players. But you sort of got to figure out a system where it's. These events are huge and they have a lot of meaning. That's that's their ball of wax to figure out. I don't know how they do it, but they got to figure it out. Yeah, and and I would say you know like yeah, it's a little it's a it's a little aggressive because I just at the end of the day I just wanted like how cool yesterday was more often, and you're not going to get it every week. That's why the Ryder Cup's really cool because it's every two years that helps add to how special it is. The Olympics every four years add to it, but. It does feel like there were there were some stretches in more of a golden age of golf where it felt like once a month or so, or more often at least, like we had some insane finishes that felt wildly important. And that sounds like a really difficult puzzle to solve. But if the PGA Tour's kind of main premise and main defense against defectors is that winning matters on the PGA Tour, that each week it's prestige and that's sort of our different sauce, then it feels to me like it should feel closer to how yesterday was more often. And even if that is an unbelievably difficult puzzle to solve, there are people that make millions and millions of dollars that are on this board, the commissioner, whoever, that like they should be working on trying to solve that, in my opinion, and trying to think how can we you know, learn from this, learn from the experience, and, and it is their top premier event. You're not going to be able to match that very often, but I look at the golf course. I think the golf course is a huge part of it. People respect the hell out of Pete Dye. Consider it an absolute masterpiece. And focusing on going to golf courses more often, I think there's quite a few tour, uh, courses on tour that are at uh, certain TPCs and areas that people don't really like that much, and they don't deliver you know great finishes. I think the cleanliness of the whole thing, the fact that it is just the Players' Championship, it's not this sponsor, that sponsor, that the broadcast was a massive difference. And so you know, I think the way that they present. The actual experience on site, kind of like we've talked about it, how about how you know similar to Augusta, it feels important even when you're there walking around and all that. And so I, I don't know, it's not easy. They're probably not going to be able to ever do it overnight. But it, it just made me think that, like, man, the tour, if they do do it when they do do it right, they can deliver something that's fucking incredible. And that was, and it, it sh- it's not, it doesn't give me a lot of hope if they can only do it. Once a year, it feels like they need to be able to try, do that every three to five or six weeks to deliver something that really gets the people going. And I feel like that there were stretches where that did occur a lot. And I don't know if it was just the stars or if the tour was not uh, facing some existential threat. So they had more money to put into broadcast. I don't know what that answer is, but it just made me want it more often. It made me hope that the guys that are working towards it can can kind of curate things so that something like that happens more often. I think Tiger Woods is another factor. Um, him being around just makes everything feel bigger. And and when he was around more often, anytime he was in contention, it was like a massive thing. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I think that I also think having 144 players was great. I, I loved the broadcast the first couple of days, cutting to guys who are five over par, cutting to guys who are just hoping to make the weekend, you know, in addition to all the stars being there. And I, I'm kind of coming around on what Lucas Glover said, which was like, Someone asked Jay Monahan why we made all these signature events, and then the, our biggest event, the PGA Tour's main events, we went for 144 players with a full cut as opposed to this like 69 player amount. I don't think that 70 player fields are better. I just don't. I think in general, the more golfers we can watch, the better. The top guys will all be there if the purses are high enough. And I don't think having the other guys really takes away from the product. And I think we've come accustomed to big tournaments 
historically majors, except for the Masters, which is his own deal, all have 150 players. And there's this sense of kind of freneticness on Thursday and Friday. And the broadcast is trying to cut to everyone. And, oh, my God, who's this guy who's making a run? And, you know, is this, is this star going to miss the cut? I liked that aspect as well. So I'm, I'm kind of out on the limited fields. And I'm, I, I'm more of a fan of the 144 players. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot for them to have to figure out. It's their own ball of wax, as Trent said, um, which actually cites back to a 1620 English legal text that involves allocating inherited land amongst siblings by rolling scraps of paper into wax balls, right? So they had this land and all the all the heirs would actually get these wax balls given to them. And with each scrap of paper designated to a portion of the land, each heir drew his lot and then unwrapped his whole ball of wax or his entire inheritance. Had you heard ball of wax before I said it four no, minutes ago? never. I don't think I'd Good ever one. heard that. Did you know where it came from? No, I didn't know where it came from, but I, I like I hadn't used it in a long time, but I feel good about using it now. So I you think, say that's their own ball of wax to unwrap? Or it's like that's its own ball of wax. That's its own ball it's of like wax. It's like it's its own compu- uh, complicated like thing that somebody else has got. Right, because now that you know the meaning, you're seeing like Monaghan and all these guys in a room literally, you know, it's a huge opening ball up of wax. this ball of wax and each person has like a thing on it. It's like, going to be so We got to do that. We got to do yeah. that. We got to do this. It's taking forever. My last little bit on this, and it goes to kind of what we've all been saying, leaderboards are important, and when you don't have as much star power, which Liv has done to the PGA Tour, you're going to have less of a chance to have a good leaderboard, and a, a good leaderboard goes a long way. These first couple tournaments, some of them, the leaderboard has been like a random college football generator on college football 2014. Like Nobody knows who these people are, so when you don't have the star power, that hurts. And when you have less star power, you have less of a chance to have a good tournament. It starts there. Everything in the last couple of years has started there. We just need all these guys together. And then what is our meeting happening today? Is that what's happening? Cars.com is the lead, uh, leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car. They're celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research, find inventory, finance, and sell cars. Rubber Life takes you next, and whoever you're looking to be, there's a car for that on cars.com. They got over 2 million possibilities on cars.com, gentlemen. That is so many possibilities. So many cars. You know what I was looking at the other day? Actually, it was today when I was driving to the city. How many more SUVs there are in the world? Just like, I feel like that's the go-to car now. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, like a, like a mid-sized SUV. A mid-sized like. SUV yeah. has overtaken the compact, just regular car. I would say when I get like an Uber XL, a lot of them are midsize SUVs, I feel like. Driving into New York City from Long Island, ton of traffic, ton of people. You just look around and it's just all higher cars. Those sedans, those like lower sedans are almost like a thing of the past now. Yeah. It's weird. I wonder if it's just because, I don't know. I wonder what it is. Go on cars.com and get yourself Yeah, I like sitting high. I like sitting high. Is it a safety thing, you think? It's just like people have just gotten used to just wanting like a bigger car as opposed to like, I don't know. Like the more we've evolved, we've realized that like bigger is probably better. I think so. I think like sto- storage, you know, you can throw stuff back there. Flexible, like a mid-size SUV. You can put the seats down and turn it into anything. I just went to cars.com. I typed in the make, Chevrolet, distance 30 miles, zip code, all that. Showed me uh, 5,000 matches. So, I mean, <laughs> wow. it's just... There's just a lot of options, man, if you go to cars.com. That's why they are the leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car. Up to 50,000 cars are added daily to cars.com. So find your next possibility on cars.com. Where to next? Hopefully they're talking about Brian Harmon being a human rain delay. I mean, I know that I get on this guy. It's it's. It's it's like old news at this point. It's starting to get mean. We say the short jokes. I know it's being mean, and we're trying to be funny. I'm sure if he came on the show, we'd be his fucking best friend. I'd suck his cock. But at the end of the 100%. day, Brian Harmon, man, is tough to watch. Maybe that's good. Maybe it's good. It gets the people going. I was screaming at my TV. It's just, it's out of control to put the camera on that guy, and he has another 35 seconds before he hits the ball. They got to figure out a way to just cut to him right before he swings. Learn his cadence. I'm a big I'm a big system guy, process guy. Dr. Brett McCabe, help my game. It's all about the process. Unzip your fucking glove, walk up, think about the shot, look at your target. Look, he does it. It's too much. And I know it's hard to get on the guy. Listen, I'm being very I'm being I'm I'm honest. I'm, and I know I'm being hard on him because the guy's going out there and he's shooting mid-60s every single round. He's flag hunting. He's rolling in putts. If it works, why 
don't it, it, what is it if it ain't broke don't fix it why the hell why the hell would Brian Harmon change anything about his game and his preparation to hit a golf shot if this is making him millions and millions and millions of dollars doing it? I get that. It's on the broadcast. But we don't need to see this shit anymore. Is he we a, don't. Is he a particularly slow player on tour? Like, is he... He's got to be the slowest. Are people like, this guy's got to get it moving? Because if he's doing it within the right range and he's not slow, I Bro, think it's fine. I counted one. He looked up and down at his ball 12 times before he hit a bunker shot. One, two... Three, twelve. What are we talking yeah. about? I think I think the problem is that it's sort of like Novak Djokovic bouncing the ball, where they don't actually. I don't think he even knows when he's going to go. Like I don't think that there's a set number. I think when he's more nervous, he does it more times. So like I think maybe they're like, all right, first hole he did it f- seven times, and they they cut to him, and then he does it fourteen times. They're like damn it, and you can't cut away. And I hope he keeps doing it. I do. I hope he keeps doing it because it's now it's it's entertaining. Like I actually want to see it. if he just started hitting the ball, it would be boring. And I don't want him to stop. And I, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna try my best to stop ragging on the guy. He's an amazing golfer. He's a lefty. We gotta stick together. I get that. I don't want to. I don't want to keep being mean about it. He just fell short this week. It was tough. It's like he's just that that one putt. He's just one putt away. It he's is also, what it is. He's also yeah. He's so good. Like you can't he's really so good. He's so good. He is. We you know Frankie makes fun for being short, but he's like one uh. of those guys who's just like if he were six. If he feels like he's six five. Kisner's like that too. Where Kisner's not as short, but He's just one of those guys who's larger than life in his own mind. He just happens to be a shorter guy. It's just something about it. It's the way the world works. He's like easy to pick on because you look at him and you're like, oh, this guy actually should be. It's like David versus Goliath. He's out there. This guy, this tiny guy's out there whipping the ball around professional golf events at the players, like ripping drives down the middle and flag hunting every single hole. This guy's on the stick. Every single one. He is a fucking ball striking machine. And you're like, I should root the, for this guy. but. You, you pair his like his image up with being a human rain delay, and it's like you just he's just not doing himself any favors. You know what I mean? It, it, he's just he's got that one thing that just it's just like what do the girls say? It's like the ick. Every time I see him, I'm like, ah! you got the golf ick for Ben ah! Harmon. He too. He he like the fact that he hits it so much shorter than these guys and competes in the biggest events is Incredible. awesome. It's like yeah. so you, it's hard not to root for that. But I. Honestly, the camera broadcasting crew should just risk it. And if they cut to him and the ball's in yeah. the air already, and they could just be like, we'll be honest, guys, like we we tried to time it and, and the ball's just in the air. I don't think anybody would have an issue with that. It's so, you know, because we talk about slow play a ton on this show and in golf in general, it's a big issue, whatever. But it is whenever somebody like Tread's point, I don't know. He might be sprinting around and have 40 seconds to work with over the ball. Right. But if you stand no there for eight seconds fidgeting, it's so uncomfortable as a viewer. It's so uncomfortable when someone does it, does it in the group that you're with because it sort of paralyzes you. Like once someone addresses the ball, you're even as a viewer, you're like not allowed to move because it's like when you're playing golf and you're like, well, now you're kind of taking over my life. Like I can't move for a second because eight, nine, ten seconds you're standing there. Whereas if you go through your whole routine, we could chit chat, we could laugh about the fucking weather, the birds. And then when you address the ball, if you just pull it back real quick, you're not wasting any of my life. When he stands over that thing forever, you're you're like locked in, you're glued in, and he just refuses to hit the ball. Why should he change, though? Why should he change? Yeah, he I know. He should I not know. change. Unless someone legitimately starts giving him like a stroke penalty for how many times he looks up at the at the pin and then back down at his ball, he should not change a single thing. He's doing the, he's doing the right thing. I almost The more I talk about it, the more I want him to keep doing it. Yeah. I do. I really do. It's like having a bad announcer. Once they're gone, it's like, no, oh. it's just a boring, just a boring. We all miss Johnny Miller. All yeah, of us. Johnny yeah. Miller. You, you, you want something. You want, so, you, want so, you want something to talk about, even if it's negative. You want something to talk about. The PGA Tour is in full swing, so get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting operator of the PGA Tour. Shout out to my brother. My good brother, Kyle, who uh, woke up yesterday. Uh, he was on his way to play golf with some buddies. He uh, opened up the DraftKings Sportsbook. He put a little bit of a live wager in the morning, on, on Sunday morning, for Scotty Schaffer to win the Players' Championship. He was, you know, what, five shots back when he teed off? Shopped that final round 64 to get the W, so that thing paid out pretty nice. Um, they're just as good as they get over at, Draft Queen, over at DraftKings this week. New customers can turn five bucks into one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets on any golf bet. Also in North Carolina, um, which is where I spent a lot of the last two weeks, 
Um, listeners, do not forget that DraftKings Sportsbook is now al- alive in North Carolina, but you got to have some skin in the game, and DraftKings is the best way to do it. Scotty Scheffler was 5-1 to one on like the 15th green. Just had to overtake a couple yeah. strokes. You just had to make a birdie coming in and par out 17-18, and he was just going to win the players. And like I just looked at it, and I said, no, no, I'll go. I'll go for Wyndham. Yeah, the app is incredible. The app is just perfect. Yeah, it, yeah. It is it very easy really to navigate. Especially on, for hockey, too. Like when Mr. Ice will throw out his pick, which, listen, IceCon's coming up. Hashtag DK Partner. It's going to be incredible. But boy, boy, will that, that that's going to be a big one for sure because things have not, things have been a little bit rocky, but it's, you know, you're always with your guy, Mr. Ice. But I, I sometimes have to mute him on Twitter because it's just tough. Like I just can't see it every night because I want to go in. But um, when he throws at the line, you can adjust that line right there from six and a half to six. You can buy the point six and a half, six, five and a half, whatever you want to do. It adjusts all the lines right there. It's super easy. It's very, very, very user oriented. Like, you know, that people that made the app, they know what they want out of the app. And you can tell it's so simple. It is a very, very simple, great app. You know, we did a good amount of Brian Harmon chatter on this show. And I just looked at the Valspar Championship top 20. Brian Harmon is plus money. He's plus 130 to finish inside the top 20, you know. Not as strong as the field, obviously, as the Players' Championship. So uh, throw a small wager on p- there. Yeah, it's gonna be a pick. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Just our a guy tiny one, a little small one. <laughs> Download the DraftKings Sports Book app and use code four. New customers can bet five bucks to get one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code four F O R E. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Speaking of announcers, I want to give a quick shout out to Kevin Kisner, a delight to listen to on the broadcast. Really, really, really good. He fits in great with those guys. He's just, that's his future. I don't know how much more he's going to play. I want him to play. I want him to play well. I want him to do whatever he wants to do, I guess. And if he wants to be an announcer, he absolutely can do that. He is good every time they throw it to him. He's funny. He's got the accent, which just helps everything. I, I love Kiz and him and Smiley did the happy hour on 17 a couple of the days. That's they just got a good crew and adding Kevin Kisner to that was just a plus because he's like he is. He's not exactly like he is when he's with us. That's a little different, but he's enough like that where he is fun and enjoyable and informative and insightful to listen to. So I just want to give a shout out to our guy. He's great. Yeah, he's excellent. I And that adds to the whole thing down the stretch when you got a guy like him that everybody likes who knows his stuff. He's witty. You could tell too the other guys on the broadcast like him right and they kind of just can go to him at any moment like oh kids this is sort of similar to that one you had right you know and then they're just kind of shooting the shit talking about it he knows when to shut up too like he knows when to like stop and let the moment breathe which is incredibly important so i agree with you that team that they've got there in that context when things are important it's quiet out there and all you can hear is like you could tell all they're doing is highlighting the actual mic next to the golf ball on the 17th tee and they let that thing breathe for like five or seconds, seven seconds, and then they hit, and you just hear it. It's in the air. It's absolutely awesome. I got to – I want to move on here in a second, but I got to shout out this tweet from, I think, Kyle Porter that I saw that went through a couple Scotty stats real quick. Since January 22nd – or I'm sorry, since January 2022, he's got 51 starts, Scotty Scheffler. He's got nine wins, only three missed cuts, 34 top tens, 22 top threes, Five major top tens, 123 rounds in the 60s. He's 540 under par, and he's made $46.3 million on the PGA Tour. Just a hilarious run from Scotty Scheffler. And it's funny, on 17, when he hit that shot in the air, I'm nervous being like, man, we saw Wyndham Clark like chunk one into the water. We've seen Sergio Garcia dunk a couple. This is such a nervy moment. Of course, Scotty Scheffler just hits it on the green. You're thinking he's got a 50-foot putt. It's going to be tough to get this close. He almost holds it. And then when he's standing there with that three wood that I believe he hit on the 72nd hole. And again, I'm thinking like, man, we have seen some guys spray it way out to the right, hook it left. Like this is such a difficult tee shot. He hit like a four yard draw down the right center of that hole. And you're thinking like that is such a different mindset than any person. I think he is truly just gaining more and more confidence in those situations. He believes that he's like the guy and he was not standing on that tee thinking like, God, don't hit it in the water and blow this tournament. He's legit like, I'm going to make birdie on this golf hole. It's just really impressive. So I know we already rattled off a bunch of Scotty stuff, but I'm blown away by that guy. I got one more. I got one more. He's already 11th all-time in career earnings. 
Wow. He's at Fifty-three <laughs> million dollars already. That doesn't include that doesn't include the FedEx Cup bonuses or the player impact program bonuses. He is like the is least rich acting guy who is fuck you rich. Like that maybe I, I mean he's so fucking rich. He's 29? 27. 27. Oh, he's going to turn 28 in a couple months. But oh shit. Yeah. yeah that 11 beard is only that was stunning to me too. And uh, and obviously like you know money has changed and stuff but for him to already be 11th all time. He's made more money than Ernie Els now on the PGA Tour. He's made more money than <laughs> Davis Love the 3rd, Steve Stricker. Like he oh. is moving on up. Guy's incredible. He's absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, and I, he's not slowing down, right? He's only getting better. His ball striking's even just like just as good, improving. His putting's getting better. It feels confident in these situations. So uh, he's just on an absolute tear. He has no sign of slowing down. I can't believe he's 27. Even him with the beard, he's always looked like one of those guys who's just a mature guy. And it's not it's not even like the beard and all that makes him look older in a bad way. He just almost in like a mature. He's gonna be like he's gonna look like. You know, Jim Furyk, I feel like, was born and has always looked like he was like 46 years old. I think Scotty Scheffler legitimately will just always look like 31 or whatever he looks like forever. He's just going to look like that the whole time. And uh, so, yeah, Scotty Scheffler, he's he's unbelievably impressive. Um, you we mentioned this meeting. meeting. A little bit. Yeah, there you go. Nice. You you want to do it, Frankie? Go ahead, do the little. <laughs> no, I was meeting. no. It's weird because we're both together, so it was like very conversational. I was like, you brought up that meeting. I forget that there's like a minute, a second delay out here. But I, I talked about the ball of wax, and then I want Danny to talk about this meeting that's happening in the Bahamas right now. I didn't want to lose that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Tiger's been there for a little while. I think Yasser's been there for a little while. Um, they're meeting. Wow. I, you know, I'm hearing that Tiger and Yasser are playing golf. I don't know if that's already happened or going to happen, but well, that's crazy. You're kind of just like, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Tiger Woods is playing with Yasser. If you would have said where, that two years ago, it's always going to end up. It's where this is always going to end up. I don't know why this team Yasser just happened finally nine met the ago. PJ Tour commissioner. He finally yeah. is meeting the commissioner of the PJ Tour. Oh, today. do you think he said yeah. something like that? Like, finally, <laughs> I got the guy. Well, I'm just I'm wondering what like what's going through his mind because nine months ago they did this they did this thing right like you know Jimmy John and Ed Hurley they went and they played golf with Yasser and they discussed and they came to this you know framework agreement and now nine months later he's just doing the same thing with a different person you know. Um, but yeah, so the, I I believe the player directors are there. You know, there are some members of the board. The strategic sports group will be will be represented, and you know, it, it does seem like everyone is working toward uh, the goal of a deal. And you know, I think there was a lot of uh, concern that when the PGA Tour got this money from these American sports team owners, that the Saudis would be like, "Screw that!" You know, we we want to be. I don't. I think it goes the other way. I think the the FS the SSG guys really want to do a deal with the Saudis because. These guys have other businesses, and the PIF is the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world, and they want to do business with these guys. And they also know that Yasser has two ways forward, right? If Yasser is invested in the PGA Tour, then it is way less attractive for him to try to steal talent and assets from what he is invested in. And if he's not involved with the PGA Tour moving forward, then he's got one way forward, and that is to keep taking players. So it's a very simple situation that's going on right now. I love that this whole thing is just straight out of succession. Like the fact that they're all on an island together and the dynamics of like even they go to lunch and then they say goodbye and then they're not going to meet for dinner for three hours. But like one guy meets with the other and then they regroup at their own team. Like what a wild, wild thing to just be a part of. The fact that the whole thing is occurring. Uh, it does kind of feel, Dan, like we're like, have they put have they progressed like are they right Isn't no it's just what they were doing in june yeah when they i think said the guys like they... who they pushed out the guy the players freaked out they, they made this deal without the players the players freaked out they said okay we're at the wheel now and now they're just doing the same thing that the guys before were doing basically just that's the thing if you have tiger then you have the players like before all this it's been jay monahan jimmy dunn like all these guys who they're shadowy figures to a degree like and they don't they don't have they don't have the player's interest at all. If you have Tiger Woods and you can say Tiger Woods agrees to what's happening, then everybody else is going to fall in line. And that's going to make this whole thing a lot simpler and a lot easier to swallow for the rest of the players. Tiger Woods has no money like um um he has no money? No, like uh incentive. Incentive. Bad couple for all of this, right? I feel like Tiger Woods is the ultimate guy to be leading for the players. He just wants what's best 
for the guys that are going to come up behind him. He has nothing. There are no incentives for his personal gain for anything. The guy's made more money than God with this fucking with this sport that he's been able to play. He does not care about any any of that. And we've learned that from people in his circle. We've seen that from Tiger Woods himself. He just wants to get the right deal done. The fact that now he is fully involved in meeting with the head guys now, I feel way better about it. I, there was always this thing where it's like Tiger didn't really know what was going on either. He was finding out about what happened with that call the same time that Justin Thomas did, the same time that we did. It was just on the news. And Tiger Woods was like, I don't know what the hell just happened. We're going to have to figure out. And we're going to have to move forward. Now Tiger's in the meetings. He's on the golf course. He's saying what he wants. I, if I'm a PGA Tour player, I'm very happy that Tiger's at the helm of this thing now. No more of the suits. No more suits. Tiger Woods knows what's best. He is golf. He's going to make the best decision for golf. Yeah, I think he too very much, you know, uh, understands the history of the tour and that Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas get all of this credit for sort of building out the modern tour and the whole thing existing because of what those guys did for it, how much they believed in it, and this is kind of his chance to become that yeah. guy. I think that's his as a legacy guy. This is a totally different kind of legacy that he could build and be a huge part of it. Uh and yeah, you just have I mean when you're Tiger Woods in any golf meeting ever, you just have all of the control. He could pretty much make all of the choices because everyone's going to listen and follow him because he is golf. So, uh, so yeah, what to be a fly on the wall down there would be some excellent stuff. You got some big egos down there, and yeah, they're just on That's an a island. Great in the point, Bahamas. Riggs. Tiger Woods might be the only person in the world that makes Yasser feel inferior. Yeah, Yasser's such a big, definitely like a little nervous. He's to such to a play big golf, golf guy, right? This is his favorite thing in the world. He loves golf. How could yeah. you not get completely like wooed and wowed and swooned by Tiger Woods? That guy walks into the room. It's like, oh, shit. I know I have more money than everyone on this fucking planet, is Yasser saying. But this guy's got something I don't. And it's this aura that's around him. And it's this greatness. It's the greatest that's ever lived is right in front of me. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. That's that. That's a power struggle right now. You know, Tiger's doing like, the that. Trump thing I mean, too, where he's like giving him a little, like maybe the handshakes. Tiger's bringing him in a little bit just to let him know, like I'm the guy, dude. I don't care who, what yeah. fund you run. You know you're excited to meet me. Now let's talk. Business. Mispronounce the name a little, like yes. oh, yes. you see her. Yes. He's <laughs> doing it all, dude. He's, he's he's probably right out of the playbook of just trying to dominate a conversation. <laughs> I I wish that this was fucking filmed, man. I, oh, well, how, yeah. much you, how much would you? How much you pay? Where he pulls how much would you pay for this? Like a documentary on this right now? I mean, personally, ten grand. <laughs> oh my god, I'd pay everything. You're a you're a yasser, right? Yasser. Okay, yeah. Let's great to meet you. I'm glad we got together here. Yeah, he. I mean, it's like when guys uh, walk into the Oval Office, right? And they've got this whole plan that we're preparing for it their whole life. They sit down and they're just like, uh, ah, you end up like caving and and conceding everything. So, um, so yeah, hopefully, good stuff comes out of that. Summer is all about the freedom to have fun, but you don't need to blow your budget on a trip to make the most of it. Forget a vacation and take a tequila cation with Ooh. the new Truly Tequila Sodas. These things are fantastic. We've been having them at the Barstool Classics um, this year. People love them. A little, um, you know, it's just a nice, refreshing mix in there. It's the refreshing blend of real fruit juice from Concentrate, sparkling water, and premium tequila Blanco. It's the drink of, well, right now it's the springtime, but it's going to be the drink of the summer. Already is for me. I drank about seven of these uh, when I played with Luke Kwan in the Barstool Classic, and I felt awesome. Didn't really wasn't really hungover. It's not like crazy sugary. I yeah, I'm, I'm all in on. It. I love tequila, and I think it's a, a great great way to incorporate tequila. It's it's the drink of the summer. Yeah, this will be the drink of the Borelli household this summer for sure. Just stocking up the fridge, waiting for that first day to crack one open. It's actually spring has broke here in New York for Definitely. sure. I went out and golfed <clears throat> the other day. And it's just like next time I'm bringing I'm bringing that tequila with me. That tequila soda has to come with me. When you crack that open with the warm breeze coming in, man, there's nothing better. Mm. There's nothing better. Mm. Uh, try all four refreshing flavors: lime, pineapple, guava, grapefruit, and watermelon. All the five percent ABV and just 100 calories. Take a tequila cation with new Truly Tequila Soda today. Truly Tequila Soda. Keep it light. Hard Seltzer Beverage Company, Boston, Massachusetts. Please drink responsibly. Colgate, shout out to the Four Play Crew. We're huge yes. Colgate college basketball fans. Um, we got the old Barstool Sports bracket busters going on this week. The situation is simple. Uh, if our team, which is uh, Colgate, goes farther than any other 
Barstool Cruise team in the entire tournament. Uh, we win $40,000, uh, which would be incredibly fun. It'd be great for us. Our boys play around noon, I believe, on Friday it's morning. Baylor. Is that right? Right against Baylor. Or Friday yep. afternoon. Yes. Listen, we're a 14 seed. It's obviously hard. You got to pick a 9 through 16 seed. It's all crapshoot. We had a pretty early pick. We could have gotten one of these 9, 10, 11 teams. I got a tip from my brother-in-law, who's a big college basketball fan. I'm not putting he's this all on him. With the, the he's dozen. been our guy. guy. He's like 5-0 and oh on Call a Friend in, in the dozen. He's been unbelievable for us. He said at dinner last night, listen, there's something about Colgate. If, you, if, if Colgate comes up and you can grab him, now, was it a little early for Colgate? Sure. We're riding with them. Colgate has to play Baylor. If they win that game, they, they play the winner of that New Mexico game, which also New Mexico everyone loved. They were like a 10 or a 9 seed. So then, like, we're right in it, guys. Like, if New Mexico wins their game and Colgate wins, we're playing against another Bracket Busters team, and then we're just rolling. Now we have a great second game. Get to the Sweet 16, and we're in a good, in a good spot. Colgate, brush your teeth. We're, we're, we're ready to rock, baby. We are ready to rock on Friday. I can't wait. I like brush your teeth. Brush your teeth as our rallying cry. Just brush, brush your teeth. Yep. Your teeth. <laughs> just, just mint them up. Uh, yeah, I mean, anytime we venture out of our golf lane and into other sports, we rely on our guy. And our guy gave you a tip. Yes. So we're going with it. We're Colgate. Brush they made, your teeth. They, they made it to, uh, they made it to the tournament last year. They were 15 seed. They played Tennessee. And they won the second half against Tennessee, a number two seed. They have all their guys coming back, Colgate. Like, I do think that this is like, come on. They're a small conference team. They're playing against Baylor. Let's win a game. Let's win a game. We're huge Colgate guys. And if I had to let you guys guess what state that college is in, do you know? I, I know. Nobody, is it New York? It is. Yeah, New it's, York. Like, it's like it's in Ithaca, isn't it? It's like next yeah. to uh, uh, upstate. It looks like Hamilton, New York. I just know it because the teams they play yeah. are all. Yeah, it's by like saying they're the way, Patriot up, way up there. Yes, the Patriot League. Yeah. In college hockey, they're ECAC school, which was our league. So we played against Colgate twice a year. Got and it. we would always do the Colgate Cornell trip, which was an absolute grind. You drive into like, you know, upstate ish, cold, barren New York in the middle of winter on like a Greyhound bus, basically, for the for three days straight. It was an absolute grind. So I unfortunately know Colgate a little bit too well. Uh, but I'm glad that they're on our team. Feels good. Home. Friendly, the whole deal. Cute. Brush your teeth. Go Colgate. Brush your teeth. Hopefully they light it up. How about our guy Joel Damon this week? You guys see that? Oh yeah, very nice. How much did he win? Big week. He's 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 created quite a role for himself where he finishes T eleven and everyone's like, let's fucking go, Joel. That's awesome. <laughs> What's that payout? He made a. That's a good question. I'm gonna find out right now. But he was, you know, he was saying on on the side gig that yeah, it's, it was coming and the Netflix show was a little too negative. He made six hundred and six grand. So nice. <laughs> I finally watched that episode. Super emotional. You definitely, the editing. Yeah, I'd like to talk to Joel. I mean, I'm sure you guys have all spoken to him, but it is uh, an onside gig for sure. He talks about it, but fuck, man, that's the editing was a little tough. It's like you, yeah. from, like like he misses a cut, and then they're just like he's at the bar just ordering another drink, and it's just like I mean, the guy, like you're just saying he's an alcoholic. At some point, you're just saying he's an alcoholic. Like it was that. Yeah. It was almost like that apparent. That it's like this guy, and everyone talking was like, yeah, this guy is a legit alcohol his wife and gino they were they were very honest which is great for a show like that you have to be honest like, we're yeah not gonna lose and just go get another drink it's like holy shit it made you think that like dude they do hours of interviews with the the his wife and with gina and then they just cut the one part where they're like yeah if he just didn't drink so much like he'd be great you're like fuck man that's not and even like the sweet scene on like the uh, it was so emotional on the plane he had a beer in his head. <laughs> just like, come on, dude. Like, yeah. Hey, just find this time. guy. Do the guy a favor. Like, he's obviously not, like, shit-faced. Just, like, take the beer out of his hand. Just make it, like, I don't know. But he's the best. He's the most real guy on tour. You feel like you're watching the real story. It's just a regular guy out there that's just making his way through a professional sport. And the ups and downs is great. It, yeah, it was very emotional. Um, but Full Swing has been um, phenomenal. I think, this se- I think this season is living up to all the hype. Uh, the Tom Kim episode I thought was going to be a little boring. I thought that was great. Uh, oh no! Yeah, what? Yeah, like I finished um, it. I guess. How I they? I, it. I don't know if I finished it. Him walking into the wrong, um, into the wrong room locker room. Yeah, hilarious. the champions locker room. I mean, so innocent. Uh, I'm definitely not supposed yeah. to be in here. Everyone's just like, "What's wrong?" He's, I'm, "I'm in the wrong room. I'm in the wrong room. Champions room. Definitely not allowed <laughs> to be there." He was talking about it as he's walking out. Even when he's eating breakfast, he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get the pimento cheese. I wasn't supposed to be in that room, though. I definitely wasn't supposed to be in that room. Something I would do. I like, just stumble into the champions locker." 
Um, I don't think I finished that though. I actually don't think I finished that episode. The end of it in the in the practice round when they're like giving him shit, he kind of was like, "I wish they wouldn't call me like a twelve year old." You know, he's like very like honest and and, and uh, he is very innocent. But yeah, I the, they crushed it. I remember Paul McGinley like a year ago made the comment after the first full swing uh, season came out, and he just made the point of how you know he's a Formula One guy and how the first season of Formula One was a little elementary, and then the seasons that followed were much better in his opinion because you already understood the simple stuff and now you really got into the complexities of everything and the relationships and as a viewer you kind of understand the player and the caddy and all that stuff and i thought that shone through shined through shone through shined shone shone through in the second season i really did think that like the amount that they kind of highlighted the guys that you knew and the deeper part of it i thought as much as the editing may could have been a little bit more friendly towards joel and you're right he's not just shit face 24 7 even if you just have a beer here and there but uh was like you understood and you could kind of go through that really emotional sadness with them because of the first season and they had laid it all out there so um so yeah i i thought full swing it uh was phenomenal it was really good um Dan, what do we think about our friend Rory McIlroy? It's that time of year. The Players' Championship is over. We've got three more events. Uh, they don't have the match play this year anymore, which is a shame. So, really, none of them are going to be, you know, that felt like kind of a big event. It was different. Tiger usually played it when he was healthy. Uh, so, they're going to have a couple events in Texas, the Valspar. But other than that, we're kind of focusing our, our sights here on the Masters Tournament. Rory, every year going into that thing, it's the one, you know, major that he has not won. He hasn't won a major in... Uh, ten years at this point, but um, that you know doesn't it, he's not playing horrible, but it feels like he's not quite where he wants to be. Yeah, our uh, social Rob really threw Alex Bush under the bus here. I don't know if you guys saw he made a comparison of uh, of Rory McIlroy to Josh Allen, which I actually think is is kind of spot on right now. Where Rory made twenty six birdies this week, which is the second most in the history of the Players Championship, behind only Sam Ryder, who made twenty seven birdies this week, uh, and he finished nineteenth. He hit five balls in the water for the week. Um, so the good is definitely there, but he is making so, so, so many silly mistakes. Um, but maybe it's a good thing, right? Like last year, or I feel like maybe it was the year before, he's, he's come in playing super well, and there's all this you know pressure on him and all this expectation at the Masters. He's not going to have that this year because it's a lot of the talk is going to be about Scotty and can and, you know can Scotty do this or you know, John Rahm defending his title. So as far as Rory, you know, it's never he's never going to be under the radar going into the Masters, but I think he's there's going to be less of a spotlight on him this year than there was before. But it's also it's amazing how he can make, you know, finishing 19th in the players, which is a great finish for most guys, 285 grand. And he can make that look like absolutely miserable. True. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. The, so are they saying that the Josh Allen comparison is like he's one of the best in the league, but then like has like the interception at the end of the game or something? Just can't yeah, I mean, you have to forget about the first half of Roy's career to make that uh, that right. thing work. You yeah. have to. I get what he's saying. Yeah. He's certainly up there. He's talented. He's got all the tools and he's knocking on the door playing really well. But he makes mistakes that you're like, man, I wish he wouldn't make those mistakes. Right. He does the spectacular, but he also does the very silly. Yeah. That's right. Man, I just want him to win at the Masters. That would, boy, that'd be sweet. That would also really transcend. It would. When Yeah, it would. When you just said, too, like, John Rahm defending at the Masters, that put, like, a little golf tingle down my spine. Like, that got me. I hadn't really processed that that's what's going to occur. We're going to have this guy, this, like, villainous guy all of a sudden because he went to the dark side. He's going to show up. He's going to have his green jet. He's going to have his menu come out for what he's putting out for dinner on Tuesday night at the Champions mm, Dinner. He's just going to be, be the, the best ever. Champion. Mm. Why do you say that? I just love, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like he's going to. You saying you, you Mexican food? Okay. Yeah, what are you saying? That's what I'm saying. Spanish, Spanish. Spanish. Know. That guy knows how to eat. Okay. Paella. 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 Right? I think he's going to be a little bit of flavor there, right? Chips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dips. R risotto. <laughs> Risotto is so good. Underrated. Risotto. Anytime Guacamole. I see, if I see risotto on a menu, Ooh. I get it. I'm actually been on a stretch with cheesecake in the same way. If you if I go to your restaurant and you got cheesecake, I'm eating the cheesecake. It's so good. What a what's the difference between like, like, like Spain just like food cheeseburgers and, and like, like what, what would like a Spanish but, meal be as opposed to like just like a <sighs> southern I, flair Mexican like jamón ibérico. They have oh, like a yeah. They they just do a, ham, a little more they European do risotto. They do pa paella. Paella. Do paella. you love paella? I do love paella. Paella is delicious. 
I'll be when does that when does that come out? Does Usually that come out like the Tuesday? The Tuesday? That menu will pop up? A little earlier, maybe. Maybe like the week before even, Dan. Does that come out the week before? I think it might it come definitely out comes out early. before it definitely comes out before. Um I actually oh. have a I can say this because I'm gonna be on a call with John Rahm tomorrow at eleven AM. What the heck? Through Augusta National. So I will Ask him. Ask him and we'll see if we'll get the answer. Hell yes. Awesome. Mm. It's like a journalism call. Yeah, this is like a, they do this every year with the defending champ. It's like a talk about, you know, defending and all this. It's a conference call. Are we at the point still with um where where, where PGA tour players feel like they have to win just to like keep the live guys off? you know, the leaderboards and, and winning, or is that just gone? Like, it's gone. Like, so you, so you think if PGA tour players defend, like win every single major and they just keep the live guys out of the news, yeah. no hardware, no, no championships, no jackets for any of those guys. You don't think that's a huge uh, win for them or they've lost already. That's gone. I uh, think, I think the only way that that would become a thing is if it's a meaty creation. If we do it right now, we could do it right now if we wanted, but I don't think, I, I really don't think the players... I don't know if it's just like, it's Scotty, it's Rory, it's Tommy Fleetwood, it's Jordan Spieth, like all four guys. It's like, all right, all right, we got something Again, over here. Again, I, I think that would be a narrative, but I don't know how much it would actually ring true in the locker room. Okay. I don't know if guys actually give a shit, but... I think the more the more thing is that like when a guy wins a major now, he just puts an immediate target on his back for Liv to go and get because he's got five years, as you know, if there's no deal, he's got five years of exemptions... It's like Wyndham Clark, you know, win a major and, and, and start negotiating. My dad asked me this yesterday when we were watching. He's like, is, is Liv still at the point where no matter what the name is, if the guy just is just a flash in the pan, hot guy, I mean, I'm not calling Wyndham Clark a flash in the pan, but right now his stock is so high. Is that guy just getting calls and texts from, from Liv being like 50 million, 80 million? Is that going to keep happening for our existence or we just don't know with this new deal what what? Are they still going to poach these guys? I think they're big game hunting at this point. I mean, they you, you're kind of at that point. I hope. I mean, with a deal, I don't know what anything's going to look like. I don't know what Greg Norman's going to do if if a deal happens. Like, I don't know what happens. I hope that they become like the tours can play in each other's events or whatever. I I just don't think it's going to have the longevity of like we have to think about this for too much longer. I have confidence in this like meeting and what's happening. I think we're going to get a deal within the next like few months. I don't think that Liv or Greg Norman has any clue what's going on. I think they're just as much I think they're totally in the dark because I think Rory was saying this. He's like I think Yasir and Liv are two different entities and Liv has kind of bungled the narrative, but I think Yasir you know, wants to do the right thing. It's just that Greg has kind of come in and screwed everything up. So I don't think that Greg Norm, I think they're probably a little bit nervous too. Cause if they make this deal with the PGA tour, then what happens to live? They're definitely nervous. I would say, but they're also like Yasser is the financier of everything that's going on at live. So he's, he could, he's just going to do whatever he wants. Right? Like I, do you still feel Dan? Like he cares a lot about like live, like live being live and surviving. I think that from what I gather, he does like live and I think he very much does believe in team golf, but I think not, I don't think that he, he's so attached to it that he would prefer that over being, you know, very high up at the PGA tour. I think he has a lot of respect for the PGA tour and what they've built. And I think what he wanted all along was to be part of the PGA tour. I don't think he wanted to start his own thing. I think he wanted to be part of the PGA tour and they said no. And now they're saying yes for the second time. I will say, I think the biggest dynamic of the live versus PGA tour guys at the masters is still exists, which is, the, or at any major exists, which is that if they're not going to win, I think that they're on their each respective sides, heavily rooting for one of their guys to win. I think that that it, it is true. I think if you have a, you know, a, a ROM versus a, or like last year when it was Rom representing the PGA Tour versus Brooks. Like I think every live guy was heavily rooting for Brooks and every PGA Tour guy was heavily rooting for Rom at the time. And I think that will still exist, um, which is cool. It's a cool dynamic. I think that people are like, this is our team, even if we're playing different teams on live or whatever. And I think that's still going to be present. So, um, but yeah, I got a little golf tingle. I got excited when you said Rom's going to be defending at the Masters and he's going to be a live guy now and we're going to see everybody together um, coming up. Not that far away i didn't have any way of fact checking this someone said it to me yesterday and i was like oh that's insane rip. um but i think brandel said something on um live from about nick taylor wearing some sort of head device with a drone did you guys hear about this <laughs> wait what 
no. <laughs> practices. This is what I mean. Like someone said it to me, I was like, "Where did you hear that from?" I tried Keep to going. look it up, and he's like, "Oh, so it was, right on, now it was on live from <laughs> Nick Taylor wearing a head device. <laughs> he wears some sort of head device that like the drone is attached to it, and if if he like gets excited over a ball, the drone will like I know buzz. What you're talking about. And then like he knows how to control it with his mind, where it's like he can calm himself down, and the drone will fly away. But if I know, but if they he were gets all nervous, flow state. When he gets low in flow state. state, the drone takes flight. But I don't know if they were talking about. I don't know if they were talking about a literal drone or a, <laughs> or a figurative. I'm not sure, but they. I did hear that bit about. Why would they? I was like, right. I was like, does the drone have a bomb on it? And if he gets too excited, <laughs> yes. just drops on Damn it. Damn it! So and someone took dead? it extremely literally. I I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a torture device. <laughs> no, I don't understand. Like he's getting nervous. Like yeah, it's, it's getting like, closer and closer. It's gonna peck out your oh, eyeballs. It's got it. It had to have been uh, figure of speech or something. Wow, I still don't even understand it. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> Brandel was getting a good amount of play for he did he did go after aim point. Uh, you know, reading the putts on the green pretty hard in one of the segments during live from, and it got me. It got me going. He was bringing up all the stats, being like the agronomy is all better now, yet the stats are worse from every different amount of feet, from 5 feet to 10 feet to 20 feet. The PGA Tour players across the board putt worse now than they did before all this stuff came up, and he was just going on and on and on about it. It was great. I enjoyed that. I love Dan, what was the name of the guy who was was, um, reenacting all the Rory stuff? I want to give him a shout out. Uh Oh, Johnson Wagner. Just really putting in the blue collar work to try to figure out what happened in the Roy situation was throwing fastballs into the grass so people could get a, a better idea of what was happening. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, with the mustache and the whole deal, he's got a nice look Incredible. down there. All right, we're going to do a little bit of From the Gallery real quick. From the Gallery, uh, you can email us, foreplay at barstoolsports.com. Our great friends at Fireball Whiskey are the presenting sponsors of From the Gallery. Have yourself a great time out there on the golf course. We, uh, you know, we all want to shoot well. We want to play a good match. We want to try to be victorious out there with our friends or whatever we're doing. But we're really out there to have a good time. You're getting away from work. You're getting away from the stresses of life. Fireball whiskeys, 50 milliliter shooters are going to help you do that. You don't need uh, glassware. You don't need chaser. You don't need any of that stuff. So throw a bunch of the Fireball whiskey, 50 milliliter shooters into your golf bag. Or if the beverage cart comes rolling around, snag several. You rip that top off. That uh, you, you you snap them back with your friends and you have a great time. It's the iconic cinnamon whiskey from good old Fireball. All right. Um, Chaston says, do you think any YouTube golfers will be able to film around at Augusta National? We know they are somewhat more open since filming the Dude Perfect stuff and since the Bryson video happened. What do you guys think? I would say yes eventually yeah what's the time on this right. question and we always yeah. go back to this but it's almost like do we think aliens exist it's like i think with enough time yes well they already did dude perfect did that thing right at amen corner with yeah, but that uh, was with, yeah. on was tv wasn't it or was it on youtube that was youtube i think was it it was youtube i think you also got it what do they have like 65 million subscribers i remember we looked at that when they did it we we're like oh i think this opens the door for creators like us to do it and we looked up how many subscribers they had and we're like we're not the same we're not the yeah. same at all yeah but so but i do think that, we're getting to that point we have to be if they're willing to do that they might go after just the biggest golf one you know that's what you have to hope and it's been a couple of years now so and, and it has not happened but i think eventually i, I mean the flip side of it is that they just don't need it there's no reason but they're 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 still a golf course that you know could have a youtube creator out there now who are they going to pick Boy, would I love for it to be us. That would be incredible. Is it probably going to be like Charlie Woods when he starts a YouTube channel? Yeah. Mm. Man, that mm. would do numbers. A YouTube group just playing Augusta. Oh, my mm. God. Just to see. Dude, think about that. That place, They people who do play there are scared to talk about it. Like, just we're talking regular people. They're like, they scare people into saying, oh, you like, hey, what you do on 12? And they like pull you into a room and they're like. I don't really want to talk about this, but I'll in hushed tones I will talk about it. We're talking about we're talking about a group of YouTubers going there and playing and talking about it, and I'm sure doing the whole experience. Like as close as it might feel, we still might be like ten years away from. I this. know. Maybe I'm gonna say yes over the next five years, but it would be it would have to be heavily, heavily looked upon by the Augusta National team. I feel like it would have to almost be like watching a golf. Um, program like like just watching pros play 
broadcast. You know what would be a funny video at YouTube? You know what would be a funny Augusta National well, I'm trying to think. You're not going to let them fuck around. You know what I mean? Like, it'd have to legit be a broadcast. Like, it'd have to be good, good, like, Monitor. the way that they did the Peacock. Like, when we played at, like, at, at um, Grass Clippings. It'd have to be just like the golf like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they're letting people go do a YouTube video a, in the cabins and shit. I, that would be too much. For a me. great video for an Augusta National video would be to blindfold the person playing. If they don't get to actually do it. You literally just, <laughs> a guy a who's never once. played. What? That was a question once. Oh, like, really? Would you play Augusta blindfolded? That would be such a funny you video. If you, you're like, hey, you get to play Augusta National, we get to put it on YouTube but you don't actually get to see it. We're blindfolding you the whole time. As soon as you get on property, you're blindfolded. Hilarious. You would have like sweet footage of you playing Augusta, but you're just blindfolded. <laughs> you don't remember. You'd have to remember the whole thing from the video's vantage point of the actual round. You'd also like I, hit a, a million. Yeah. You would in terms I, of what you shoot? Yeah. 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 I think the answer is yes, but I kind of hope that it's no, even though we do the YouTube golf stuff. Like I, you know, I kind of like the dude perfect stuff. Like I didn't, I know we all kind of said like I, I I didn't love it I didn't need it I kind of get why they're doing it. Have you guys watched it? Hmm. Have you guys watched the the video? No. I haven't even I watched know. it. It hasn't really like I'm sure. I don't actually doesn't. haven't either. There was a Good tennis. Point. There I was a either. tennis racket involved. I remember that. We we all got worked up about it, but I don't think I ever sat down and like watched it. It never really came across my desk. Um, I know it's probably got a billion views, but I just never really wanted to watch someone hit a tennis ball on on the golf course, and that's no disrespect to them. That's just what they got approved to do. Um, I, yeah, I, I keep going back to the million I do, views. It's crazy. I do think that they will let someone do it, but I think it will be a very, very strict broadcast where it's like just play golf and and we want to we want to show the next generation, the people that love watching the good goods, the four plays and all these people, what it would be like for their favorite people to play this iconic golf course, but it's gonna be strictly just like business. Yeah, I guess the dude perfect thing goes against that though. They didn't go. I know, I just don't think they're gonna trust like me and Bubby to walk around and be like, ah! It's fucking Butler's yeah. Cabin. Look at that. Am I going to go inside? It feels like a Grant Horvat video, honestly. They'll probably give him the, you know, it's going to be somebody. It's going to be got somebody. The aesthetic. He's clean. He's got, you know, the, yeah. 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 Beautiful swing. They don't let want us, us up it. there Come slapping on. it around. Come on. Picture Bubby walking it. around with like a, like a windbreaker and no shirt underneath, just ripping fucking <laughs> fades around <laughs> the trees. Yeah. It'd be sick. I'd, be, I'd, I'd enjoy it. I'd enjoy the shit out of that. I think it's going to happen. I get what you're saying, Riggs, where it's the mystique is probably better. If they were just like, no, we're never allowing that portion of the golf world in. But I think eventually it's going to be somebody. Obviously, like I, I want them to invite and let us do it. But if it wasn't us, I wouldn't want it to be anybody. And not out of jealousy, out of just like, I kind of like that, protect that prestige. It's, it's Augusta that's, National, baby. It's like, it, I don't know. Like, what are, that's probably like, what are the, the next um, frontiers of YouTube golf? Like, I feel like when we started doing ours, it was like playing with pros. That was a huge deal. Now that is white noise. If you play with a pro, it's like, congrats. You got whoever you got. Even if you get the top guy, Tiger, notwithstanding, you get the top guy in the world. And it's like, that's cool. Back when we started, it was like, oh my God, they're playing with X. And that was a huge deal. Feels like there's not that many frontiers, at least not that I can think of. And Augusta National, having a YouTube video filmed at Augusta National, that's got to be the next thing. The or next any platform, thing. any platform video, really. That whole bit about what you were just saying, Trent, made me get upset that like we never actually did film our scramble match with Scotty Scheffler. Like he just, we were all around it. We were poking around it. We had this plan. He was like, "Yeah, come down. We'll play in Texas. We'll hang. We'll have dinner." And like, if that was just online right now, it would just kill it. He's he just wins every week. Should I just Facetime him? I'm just gonna call him. Do not, please, do not do that. Facetime him, please. Facetime him. No, I think you should do it. I think you should do it right now. You think Scotty Scheffler would answer if I Facetimed him? Are you talking about you right try? now? Why don't you try? You uh, can try it if you want. I think there's a decent chance he would, but I don't know what you're going to say. Are you ready to like talk? I think to he, him right now. Here's the thing, and no, I, you can, no, no, you can definitely do it. You got to rip it, dude. Come on. Well, the what only are you fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is he might answer your idea. But he, the, then he'd be pissed once he was like, oh, I'm on the podcast. Big time. I can't disrespect him like that. Although he might think, he might not pick up because he'll see it and be like, I just won. They obviously want me on the podcast, so they're trying to get me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> I'll just, you know, I'll go Head down. Head producer Brendan Jones is like. I'll always on. go down as a huge pussy, and I'm just not going to do it. Okay. I want to respect his privacy. He can keep he can keep ignoring us. He gave me the head nod. Oh, that's my biggest update. He gave me a head nod at, at um. A TPC. He double took. Yeah, I didn't tell you guys this. We're walking. He's 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 walking to the from the 
putt from the practice putting green over to the range at Sawgrass, and he walks across like the fans, like in that one little area. And I was walking basically back towards the merchandise tent. He was walking across the walkway. We both made a T. We were about to hit each other. And he looked up, looked down, then looked up again, noticed me, and just went with like a nice little smile, like Frankie. It was nice. All right. It was like, I'm about to go and win the players. I can't really stop and talk, but I see you. Maybe I've heard that you've been complaining that I haven't talked to you. It was one of those looks, right? Was it not? I think it definitely was. Yeah. It was one of those, like, I know what you've been saying. Like, don't worry. I still got you. We're on the comeback trail then. That's nice. It was a nice, it was was a nice, like very soft. Initially you were like, why didn't he stop and say hi to me? I know you talked me off a ledge. Yeah. I was like, cause he's warming up for the players. That's like that thing of that telephone thing we talked about last night. I got both Mm. these stories from these two individually. And when I got it from Frankie, it was batting down the hatches. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. What just happened (laughs) with Scotty and with Brendan, I was like, how, what was it like? He was like, it was good. I thought it went really well. It's like, Holy shit, man. I don't know who to believe. Yeah. But I'm going to believe Brendan. Frankie's no, like, yeah, Scotty told about me to it. fuck off. He hated my family. And yeah. it was just a, a no, beautiful little headline. It was head good. Mind. It was a good moment. I'm not going to FaceTime him. <laughs> Do I not. Can't, I, I can't. No, that's an abuse of power. Michael. Michael says, if Rory wins the Masters this year, do you think there is then any chance he goes to live? No. 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 No, no. dude. I, no amount of money makes with, him... He, yeah, want to be. He was th- fucking with someone. Someone was like, "Oh, you know, because his old agent Chubby, who he despises, and everyone, you know, he like stole everyone's money, is writing a book, and you know, said, oh, there's you know, ten percent chance that Rory goes.' And then they asked Rory about it, and he was like, "Yeah, maybe he knows something." I think, I think these guys are just so done with talking about it that they're at the like fuck with people stage. He's of anyone, he is definitely at that stage where he's been through every single part of this that you can be through, and he's like, "I don't fuck this. I don't want to talk about it." It would be, you know, I, I mean, it's the it'd be the ROM deal, right? It would be signed because you're probably pretty sure that this thing's going to come together. Um, at least that's speculation on my part in terms of the ROM deal. Um, but still, it would just be a bloodbath if Rory was like, oh. I'm going to live. If he went to live, can't. the PGA Tour would crumble. It would be over. That's your guy. <laughs> well, that's the, or would it be, you can, and I said this when ROM signed, it's like, you are now another piece that forces them to come together. You 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 have, basically act as a liaison, and you're like, people are going to keep jumping, and Rory McIlroy is jumping. So let's bring this thing together because now they got the guy who said for the longest time that he fucking hates live. As Danny Rappaport said in um, Full Swing, you can't be a professional golfer and a politician at the same time. He's not going into another term as a politician of golf. Let the guy just fucking play on the PGA Tour. He's already done his shit. It would be the greatest heel turn in sports. Oh history. my god! Yeah. Hey, Rory, you want a billion dollars? But you're also gonna have a billion more problems with the fucking media. Yeah. He's already got like how much does he got? Like half a bill. He's got enough. Yeah, he's super rich. Yeah, that's the thing. He's probably so rich that it doesn't matter. But God, if they've said like here's one point two five billion dollars, Rory McIlroy, and you just won the Masters, you're into all the majors for the next five years. I don't think he's going either, but they could throw an outrageous number. I, at that would be the craziest um, thing that's ever happened in sports if he went there. That's how crazy that would be. If, the only thing yeah. crazy would be if Tiger went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, but even they if go Mike together. Rory's been they just so do it. They do a, a joint announcement, and they're like, "Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, we're going to live." So you guys fucking figure a it joint. out. But then, like, there is no tour. Like, you're just going to, like, the new tour then, yeah. at that point. There is nothing yeah. to even defect from. If Rory and Tiger went to the other thing, it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is now the thing now. We're, we're, no more of that. I don't know. Every, every Any tour that's got Scotty on it right now feels like the one. True. True. Um, stream song. I don't know if folks know this, but relatively soon, uh, we're going to be going to stream song in the central part of Florida. I would love some recommendations when we're, you know, if people want to reach out and say, here's what to order at this restaurant or make sure that you guys go there, or stop there, or hit this. Um, we don't really know a ton about it. I know me and Lurch and a couple guys went like seven years ago when it was like still relatively new and open and they didn't have all the restaurants and all that, but it's been a long time. I don't remember a ton from it. Um, and I'm excited to get down there. So I don't know if people know that we're going there or not, but I figured as those that are invested in sort of what we do, and they want videos coming out. We're going to be down there pretty much um, for nearly a week, three or four days, I guess, and filming a ton of stuff here coming up soon. So um, I'd love some recommendations. 
busy couple weeks for the fellas actually with a couple of classics atlanta we're coming to and then alabama we've got at um graystone where i did my first Fix- fixing frankie with dr brett mccabe that's his home club where he's going to be doing like a fireside chat with all the players at that barstool classic which is an amazing little um wrinkle for all the people that join that one i mean dr brett mckay being able to give out his uh expertise and his way of thinking to the people after playing the classic is pretty cool so i'm excited for that and then yes to stream song i don't even know what is this stream song in between all that or is it after all that it's in between i think in between okay yeah that should be fun. shout out to everybody who came out to the tent at the players championship bought merch we got an update yesterday there were like two hoodies left i'm gonna just consider that sold out so uh shout out to everybody who came out we met a bunch of people people bought a bunch of merch like seriously that's that's so cool that we can still do that we we're in a bunch more this year sold it out again shout out to everybody who came out and bought merch last year was the first year that i think one of the to- the tour finally took a flyer on like a, a alternative media brand which was us to be able to put our merchandise in the tent next to the adidas's and the nikes and the peter millars you're right in the middle of this tent they took a chance on us they bought a bunch last year at the Waste Management, at the Players, at the Tour Championship, all these different stops along the way. It was such a success that they said, we're going to go all in this year. They ordered five times more, I think, is the is the rumored number for Waste Management. It sold out by, like, Friday. They ordered five times more, I think, is the rumored number for the Players. There are seven hoodies left at the beginning of Sunday. It's just, it's it's... When you order that much more and you're like, we're going to take that much more of a risk on you guys, hopefully that your fans and the people that listen to your show actually want to come and support it. And it goes the way that we want it to. That's, that's pretty phenomenal. It could have right. easily been a huge flop where it's like, listen, we just like blew our load. No. And I want you to get your head out of your gutter. We blew our load last year. We, everyone got a hoodie and that's just, it's kind of over. No, no times it by five and let's sell it out. It's great it's stuff. Fucking too. Awesome, man. It's beautiful, beautiful merch. Yeah, we are benefiting of- from the fact that we get to just throw the players on the front of our hoodie. I mean, it's a that helps. amazing, amazing collaboration, but, that, but with these, with these players, there was it's a lot of great stuff. Us, yeah. It's it great is. work. That, the crew it's, neck, you know, was so nice. There was like six, seven years ago. We could have never even imagined that we could never. throw the players on some of our gear. We had to kind of massage that relationship, play the game, Self and Dan had a nice little meeting with the PGA Tour last week, so don't take that for granted. We get to slap that thing on there. I saw a ton Never. of a ton of our merch out on the golf course even earlier in the week, meaning that people bought it online too to bring it out to the event. And yeah, it is nerve wracking. I mean, if we if we just blow it and order way oh. too much, then we just lose money because we've got all this inventory we don't know what to do with. So it's definitely a little bit of a risk. Our merch team crushes it. Uh, Pilar's down there all week. Everybody coming up with the designs, and that's a whole process that. Nowadays, we didn't even really see till the very end with all the mock-ups and what it's going to look like. And we show up to the event, and there's even new stuff like those crew necks that you just mentioned, Trent, that we didn't even know really existed before that. that. So one. it goes, it's awesome. It goes, uh, goes incredibly, it, it goes without saying, but we're going to say it anyways, that we're very grateful people buy our merch. It means a lot. Um, and then speaking of the Alabama Classic, I wanted to shout out Sam. He's the guy that tweeted at us every day for two wow. years, I think. Uh, demanding that, not demanding, politely requesting that we bring the Barstool Classic to Huntsville. the state of Alabama. Uh, Huntsville, you used to say Huntsville, Huntsville it Alabama every time. It was Huntsville, Alabama every tweet. <laughs> yep. Bring, the, I'm looking, October 11th, 2022. He tweeted, this is the first one I could find, bring the at Barstool Classic to Huntsville, Alabama, exclamation point, tagged every one of us, and then wrote <laughs> hashtag day 79. So that was October 2022. Is he playing he in this classic? Has anyone reached out to this guy? Is he playing? Oh, he's he's playing. We took care of him. He's got a whole team coming in. Wow. I actually made sure I reached out to him and said, hey, we're not going to be in Huntsville, Alabama. We're going to be where Greystone? Is that what it is? Greystone. We're going to be... Yeah. Mark, Mark Blackburn's um, there, too. That's our, that's our Mark spot. Mark Blackburn, yep. That's where we're going to go. Is I said, is, yeah. this place is really cool. Is it? Is this going to work for you? I know it's not necessarily Huntsville. Sam said, absolutely, that's going to work. Thank you so much. So we're going to see him out there. Can't wait for him to play. I want to see how many days it was, but it might have been like two or three years. He tweeted at us every yeah, single day. He, that he wanted to he really <laughs> yep. So I'm that guy's a legend. All right, let me provide you with an idea, everyone. Uh, invite the boys over. Play the golf course while you are watching the best action in golf, a ton of chatter on this show about how watching dramatic, important, prestigious golf tournaments come down to the wire is about as fun as it gets. 
with the new Rap Soto MLM2 Pro, you have a mobile launch monitor and golf simulator that you can easily take to the course or set up at home to play and practice. How this thing is tiny, okay, relative to all these big setups that you have to work about. It's uh, workout setup, whatever. It's so easy to just set up. You put your phone in there, make sure it's ready to rock, put it behind a golf club and ball, and you've just got a golf simulator in your wherever. And it's so compact. Uh, we just got ours, and when it came in the mail, I couldn't believe how small it was. It can fit right there in your golf bag. You can bring it everywhere you, you, you need to. Aside from wanting to, to do the simulator stuff within your house and while you're watching golf, to be able to have something that's this compact and bring it around with you in your golf bag, because the game is moving towards, if you're trying to improve your game, if you know your numbers and you know your, your, your launch numbers, you know your spin rate, you know what your ball speed is, it seems like that's like such a far-fetched thing to want to learn about your game. That's for the pros. It really teaches you a lot. Yeah. You realize like, oh, my spin rate with my driver is 7,000. Like I'm doing something wrong. And maybe it's a shaft problem. Maybe it's a ball problem. Like how do I get this thing down to the threes? We saw this with us. When we were on launch monitors, it changes our game. We're hitting the wrong balls. We're hitting the wrong shafts. You give yourself, you know, a lot of these things are so expensive and it's like you have to go and get a fitting. And this thing is not that crazy. You throw it into your bag and you can give yourself your own fitting. Learn learn about your ball. Learn about your swing. I think this is very important in the game. It's uh, It does make a huge difference. Just understanding you're coming outside in when you might realize or feel like you're doing the exact opposite. Having that information makes a big difference. That's why you're watching players use these monitors to try to improve their game, and they do. The award-winning MLM2 Pro offers 30,000 simulated courses to play 13 metrics and three video replay options to analyze your swing or roast your buddy's swing, whatever you would like to do, all for just $699.99. And if you visit rapsoto.com slash foreplay and use the code foreplay, F-O-R-E-P-L-A-Y, at checkout with purchase of the MLM or the MLM2 Pro, you can get a $50 gift card to rapsoto.com. So whether you're looking to improve your game or improve your Saturdays out there with your crew, the MLM 2 Pro is the solution for you. That's rapsodo.com slash foreplay. Use the code foreplay at checkout. Um, otherwise, I think that's all that I have. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has anything pressing. Uh, anything Islanders are in a free fall, unfortunately. <laughs> The Islanders lost against the Rangers yesterday. They <laughs> lost the other night in, in a heartbreaker to Ottawa. It's just ups and downs. Six-game winning streak, four-game losing streak. But Detroit keeps losing around them. They're still one point out. They're three, ba- they're three back of Philly, so they're just teetering. This, this Ireland trip is really starting to weigh heavy on the whole family now because it's like – the highs and the lows of this the highs and the lows of this Ireland trip are starting to really, really throw a wrench into things. The family well, dynamic is out of control. I brought it up at I brought it up at St. Patrick's Day of all of all days. It, we were we were celebrating the Irish culture, and I'm like, listen, Ma, like I don't know, you're gonna have to have your friends on call. And she's like, you're not gonna come. I'm like, I I, I don't I don't know. It might come down to the last game. It might come down to the last day. You're also putting people in a position. To root against the Islanders. I like, know. The, I the know. people who are in the bullpen for this trip are like, oh my I gosh, I hope they lose every single game because then they get to go and you don't. No, no, no. No, the people in the bullpen want them to win. That's right. I'm sorry. I got that wrong. It's 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 really, it's like deep down, maybe my mom and my dad want them to lose. Oh, yeah, true. I see. That's that's right. That's what I meant. But, you Puts know, it's all going to be good. kind of a pretzel is really what it does. Yeah, we're going full steam ahead playoffs for sure. That's what I want. That's what I need. I have something to say. Okay. You banned Kevin Connolly from Borelli's restaurant. Speaking oh, of the devil. Oh, yeah. I have to talk about that. You should. Uh, Kevin Connolly, uh, longtime Borelli supporter. Um, you know, there's a 30 for 30 that he made called Big Shot on the fake sale of the New York Islanders that was on his pants. One of the best 30 for 30s that they have. And Borelli's is the first scene. He's in the parking lot. He hits, he hits Borelli's. Last year, uh, I have, they have pictures in Borelli's of him when he was – a superstar on Entourage coming to Borelli's before every Islander game that he would come to. And now listen, years have gone by. He's kind of, he hasn't shown his face at the, at the games. He did go to a playoff game last year. And of course said something nice about Borelli's like on the Jumbotron. It's, it's, he's, he's been very nice to Borelli's. My dad loves him, um, but he disrespected our guy, Jersey Jerry. I'm sure whoever's listening to this has, has seen the news. Jersey Jerry used to work with Bobby Berger at action park media. I think it was called. With Kevin Connolly, he owned this thing, and it was like all the Entourage guys. I know Sophie Julia, who used to work with us, she was over there. Matt Stafford's wife had a podcast over there, Kelly Stafford. 
and Jersey Jerry was a part of this crew. I'm just recapping the story, but whatever. Um, long I think story a short, lot of people might not know everything. A lot of people. Long might story know. short, Bob gets fired one day by Kelly by uh, by um, Kevin Connolly, and because Jerry was attached to his brand, they basically just stopped talking to Jerry. And weeks go by, he's still doing his content. He was doing this on the side, fifty thousand dollar contract. He's in the union, but he's not hearing from Kevin Connolly. He's still doing his videos. He's doing his picks. He's doing all the stuff that Jersey Jerry does now at Action Park Media. And um, Kevin Connolly has the balls or no balls to have an intern essentially message Jersey Jerry and say, we no longer need you. Thank you for your time. Jerry never got anything back from Kevin Connolly. No money. He's owed $50,000. Now he's getting lawyers involved a, a couple years ago trying to sue Kevin Connolly for it. But then the lawyer's like, he's just going to hold off on this and he's going to keep pushing your lawyer fees until a point that you just want to drop the case and you're going to be fucked at the end. So Jerry just stopped talking about it. It was all fine and well. I think that Jerry just hated Kevin Connolly for the last couple of years and never really came up. And it turns out that Sandbagger Ryan Whitney and Paul Bizanet, which we would love to be on that show. We'd love to have them on our show. I've 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 got a I've got a graveyard of text messages to that crew. To we owe to, we owe Jerry no money. We owe Jerry no money. We and we would never do anything with Kevin Connolly because right. I have proof that when I was at the Islander game, I texted Jerry and I said, "Hey Jerry, I want to text you first. Kevin Connolly just said something nice about Pirelli. My dad wants to go over there and we want to do a picture. Are you okay with that?" And he goes, "I fucking hate that guy." I said, "All right." Done. I won't go over there. It was always disrespect. It was always respect for Jersey Jerry. He's dead to me. That's as simple as that. Biz and Wit didn't know about this, and that's not their fault. They are not in tune with like the Jersey Jerry uh, trials and tribulations of his past workings and his contracts. I happen to know Fair. because he told us when we were in San Valley a little bit about yeah. it. He talked about it on the podcast with us. Whatever. Um, so I made the executive decision thanks to uh, well Dave Port and I asked me is Kevin Connolly banned from Borelli's and I said without a doubt because Dave knows how much Dave knows. These moments, he knew that it was gonna that I was in a tough spot. I think in the back of his brain, he remembered that it's the Islander guy, it's Borelli's. What's Frankie gonna say? So right when Dave said, "Is he banned?" I wrote without a doubt, and then I tweeted on X. I X'd, I posted, I said, "Kevin Connolly is officially banned from Borelli's Italian restaurant since 1955." And I told Dave, "It's not tweeted. It's done." That's my final stance on it. You can't go after. You can't owe all these guys money. These are my friends. This is Jersey Jerry's my guy. He comes on our golf trips. Kevin Connolly hasn't shown his face at Borelli's in years. He, 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 there's, there's really no question. There's no question who I'm going to stand by. It's an Islander guy. It's a Long Island guy. I've always found my story kind of like funny, eerily similar to E, where it's like he was this pizza guy, Islander fan on the show, and he like attached himself to a huge star. Like, you know, he's, he, he, I was like this, the, the, the diet Coke version of that, like, coming from a pizzeria, and all of a sudden <laughs> you're like with a movie star with me, with Dave Portnoy. I got pulled out of a pizzeria. He's o- and he's an Islander fan. He's always been my guy. No longer. No longer. What? <laughs> I, I The ban is the right thing to do, and I agree with it, and it absolutely is the right thing to do. What are the logistics if Kevin Connolly shows up to Borelli's? Is Mr. Borelli like, like roughhousing I think you got to like call Connelly? the police or something. I don't, oh, know okay. what the, I don't know what happens. I don't want anyone hands. I'm not going to threaten anybody at that point. What I do want is, um, and I know he's probably dead to him, but imagine they did like an old school just sit down with a pile of cash, you think it's dead? I think it goes too deep. It's too okay. real. Like it's this real. guy owes. He fucked yeah. over Jersey Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Like was, this is not a cool thing at all. No, it's not. And bad. Kelly Stafford got involved, and she was like, "He fucked me over too." It's like this is a guy who just doesn't know what he's doing in terms of business like this. He's a piece of shit. And Robbie Berger always said it was just a tough place to work. Like he just and clearly he got dumped and moved on. And and Kevin Connolly said that Robbie Berger was never going to amount to anything. That's essentially, insane. he's like your content stinks. Uh. You lost a fucking. Wrong. You lost a home run there, brother. I ran into Robbie Berger when we were down the players. Good to see those guys. We got. We're gonna link up again and do something. Yeah, I think in. I think late April we're gonna do something with those boys. We're gonna go down to Jupiter. Cool. There's kind of some text messages being thrown around. Nothing's in set in stone. We don't even know what the idea is gonna be yet, but I think that's gonna be something that we're gonna do, which will be nice. Kevin Connolly banned from Borelli's. Official. Yeah, it just stopped me in my tracks. I figured why not give the story. It was a big tweet because Probably did people well. know. Yeah, it did well. It did well. It did, Has it he responded? Has he said anything or is he just full silent? What's tough is like, um, yeah, this is like, this is like almost like legal shit now. It's not like a rumor. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like Jerry's like accusing him of not giving him money, which is, it's a hundred percent fact on Jerry's part. This is now, this is now some real shit. It's not like, Hey, I don't like you because whatever. This is like, you owe me cash right. for work that I did. So yeah. that's bad. 
that's where it becomes legit might be like a legal issue. Who knows? I randomly had a, a tweet blow up over the weekend. Did you guys see this Ben Silverman video that the PJ Tour tweeted out? Basically, oh, yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. Basically, yeah. he marked his ball when play was suspended on Friday night. He's got a 109-yard shot that he's got a jar to make the cut. And so then the next morning, he goes out there, and he, all he's doing is hitting 56-degree wedges on the range. And they've got all this on video. He's like, I just got to hit this 109-yard shot, and I make the cut. Bang. Like a smash cut of him hitting a bunch of these shots on the range. And then he goes out to hit his shot to make the cut. Misses the green. It's one of the, like, I can't believe that the PJ Tour <laughs> tweeted the video because the ending isn't, like, nice and cheery. You think if they're going to tweet that video out, he jars the, the shot. Oh, my God, he made the putt or mm -hmm. he made the shot. Instead, he hits the shot and it doesn't even hit the green. And it was an inc it's an incredible video if you haven't watched it. And I just tweeted, I quote tweeted it being like, this is amazing. You couldn't script a better ending to this video. Got 10,000 likes. And it's... Again, if Come you haven't on. seen it, go go to the PJ Tour or go to my Twitter ah. and watch it because you they build it up and you're like, oh, he's gonna make this and he's gonna make the cut and it's gonna, they're gonna go crazy. Hits it, Never misses had a the green. Never had a chance. Unbelievable! It's a so great video. Yeah. The the uh. tour tour social was great this week. They you know and they had a lot of fun with the tournament. I saw they made the you know Scotty. There was that video of him like kicking up his right leg. They turned that into the players logo. It was really good. And also they posted the full. Uh, rules situation with uh, Rory and Victor and Spieth, like an eight-minute video of them discussing the rules, which got like millions and millions of views. They would never do that before. They would always protect their guys and not want to give the you know the image that someone's doing something wrong. So they deserve some credit for being a little more, a little more with the times with their media right. strategy. Right, somebody, some I, higher I thought... up or some young guy has infiltrated their social where it's like even the bad stuff, quote unquote, bad stuff, is good to put out there because the engagement's going to be crazy. Yeah, they're a little more loose and with their finger on the pulse of kind of the golf world now, I thought. And yeah, I thought they did a great job. Um, great job. Uh, all right. I uh, I think that's it. That's a wrap, as they say in the business. Uh, per usual, we'll be back next weekend. Or, or, or we'll be back Thursday uh, for the second show of the week. And then, yeah, we're filming a bunch of videos over the next few weeks. We've got a bunch of classics. We'll be flying all over the place. So kind of right back into the swing of things. So thank you for listening. Thanks to all of our sponsors, per usual. Thanks to everybody who bought merchandise. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Oh, I watched that Sydney Sweeney movie. She's awesome. Hit it hard.